What's up my friend? Abby here and welcome back to Writer's Life Wednesdays. Today we're talking about love triangles. Oh my gosh, I know that phrase can cause literal pain to some writers because we as readers are pretty fed up with this trope. But what if I told you that there's a way to write love triangles without being crucified by your readers? What if I told you that not all love triangles are bad? You'd probably be rolling your eyes at me. You're probably rolling your eyes at me right now, but hear me out. The reason why most love triangles are annoying and boring is because they're so shallow. They don't dig into the character's internal conflict. Everything's just so surface level and stagnant that you can predict what's gonna happen by page one. Who wants to read a book like that? Not me, bro. So is there a way to make this plot device actually interesting? Is there a way? to revolutionize the idea of the love triangle and bring fresh life to it? Yes, I believe there is. And it starts with knowing what not to do with your love triangle. Number one rule of love triangles, don't make your love triangle simple. This pretty much applies to any type of storytelling. If something isn't going to challenge your characters, make them confront their fears, and ultimately upend their entire lives, then it isn't gonna hold the reader's attention for very long. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying some crazy epic adventure has to happen to your protagonist. On the contrary, even a seemingly small thing can push a person outside their comfort zone. The reason why we hate most love triangles is because they're just so shallow. Like 99% of the time, the conflict begins and ends with which one will I choose? Not to mention the fact that from page one, we all know which one she will choose. Not only is this highly overdone, but it's void of that electricity that lights up a story, the internal conflict, AKA the protagonist being forced to face their greatest fear, crush their misbelief about the world, and achieve the thing that will ultimately make them happy, all while developing as a character and delivering a powerful message to the reader. So in light of that, let your love triangle bring out the internal conflict of the characters. Ultimately, every single thing in your book should be doing this. If something happens, the reader has to know why it matters to the characters. If I don't see why it matters to the characters, I don't see why it matters to me. Here's the thing, you can use any plot device, no matter how cliche it is, in your story if it directly engages with the protagonist's inner conflict and contributes in bringing them to the depths of despair that they'll find themselves in before their aha moment. The moment that brings their character development full circle. That's right, any plot device. If the external events in your story are constantly forcing your protagonist closer to their internal issue, they're doing their job and doing it well. And don't stop at the protagonist, bring every character's inner conflict into this mess. How does this love triangle cause all three people to either confront their fears or run from them? Rule number three, make the love triangle a catch-22 for the protagonist. Let's face it, the only intriguing thing about a love triangle by itself is that it's a sticky situation for anybody to deal with. If any reader on the face of the earth gets even a little bit of enjoyment out of reading this trope, it's because we can essentially put ourselves in the shoes of the protagonist and experience something that will likely never happen to us in real life. A good love triangle is a catch-22 situation for the protagonist. They can't have it both ways, however much they might want to. They have to make a choice and hopefully the right one. But the choice can't be as simple as what guy or girl should I choose? <laughs> no, no, no. It goes way deeper than that. It goes all the way to your protagonist's greatest fear, which consequentially is probably what got them into this whole love triangle situation to begin with. And that means your protagonist's fear is gonna be the only thing standing between them and true happiness. The love triangle has created a conflict in the protagonist's life, or rather it's brought a conflict to the surface that's been boiling below this surface for a long time. Okay, so here are some questions you should ask yourself before you write a love triangle. If you're going to write a love triangle, you have to ask yourself these questions and really think about the answers. It might take some time to come up with the answers, but trust me, take your time on this. It will be worth it. <laughs> Not only will you have more confidence and clarity going into your story, but you will have readers so engrossed in this story that they won't even notice you just revolutionized 
a highly hated trope. Here are the questions. What is my protagonist's inner conflict and how did it lead them into this love triangle? If you don't know what inner conflict is, check out that video right there. <laughs> if they were being honest with themselves, the real reason they're stuck in this love triangle is because finish that sentence. <laughs> How does this love triangle force all three characters to face their fears? And what would it take for the protagonist to overcome their fear and make the right choice? All that to say, yes, there is a right way to do love triangles, in my not so humble opinion. <laughs> when you're constantly drawing on the inner conflict of the protagonist in your story, it's impossible to not engage the reader. I know I didn't use a story example in today's video as I typically do, and that's because I just haven't seen many love triangles done well. Seriously, I've seen like, Two. And if you're curious, they're the Ross Elizabeth Demelza triangle in Poldark and the Laura Fisher Daniel triangle in Lark Rise to Candleford. But because I think I'm the, pretty much the only masterpiece theater geek around here, <laughs> I'll keep my fangirling to myself today. But just because there aren't many good love triangles out there doesn't mean you can't write a good love triangle and bring fresh life into this trope. I believe that you can. <laughs> I believe I can and have. <laughs> and hopefully you like the love triangle I wrote when you read it someday, even if you're a professed love triangle hater. Okay, my friend, that's it for me. Now it's time for you to talk. So tell me in the comments below, do you hate love triangles with a fiery passion? Has this video changed your mind about them even a little? Would you ever try writing a love triangle someday or have you already written a love triangle? Also shout out any other movies or TV shows or books that actually have good love triangles in them. And by good, I just mean one that you enjoyed. Smash that like button if you like this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos every Wednesday and I'd love to have you here in the community. Until next week, my friend, rock on. Shh.